How many differences have you caught between the 1989 Disney animated The Little Mermaid and the modern live-action remake? Like with many of these revamped Disney classics, Rob Marshall's 2023 The Little Mermaid has been met with resistance from audiences who complain of an uneasy, uncanny valley feeling from watching two realistic CGI creatures singing and dancing What is this? and dark cinematography that's hard to see or, at times, downright horrific. However, The Little Mermaid has also sparked positive buzz due to its casting charismatic actors like Melissa McCarthy as Ursula, David Diggs as Sebastian, Jacob Tremblay as Flounder, and Aquafina as Scuttle. Not to mention the culturally significant choice to cast Black actress Halle Bailey as Ariel. So, looking closer at the details, what's the difference between these two stories of Ariel? The most obvious difference between the two Little Mermaids, released over three decades apart, is the technology used to create them. As an animator, I've got to try to bring expression into her face and try to make her be as believable and make you believe that there's a really a brain thinking in that head. For the original 1989 film, which kicked off the Disney Renaissance era, Disney used their common practice of filming live actors for motion reference, so the animators could make their characters feel as real and human as possible, while still being fantastical and larger than life. I, I literally acted out every single scene in that movie, so I could, um, I, you know, I know every movement that, that Ariel makes in, in, in the film. It's really kind of funny. But with the newest film using live actors and elements of CGI technology, The Little Mermaid automatically feels more alive, while the challenge becomes maintaining the original's fun, lightness, and wonder. When it comes to the cinematography, the remake's visual darkness also adds a heightened realism compared to the cartoon, which can make the new film feel more epic and dramatic and even at times intense or jarring. This scene where the shark attacks feels almost taken out of a horror film. Compared to the fear factor of the original, which is hardly going to frighten anyone except the youngest kids. Likewise, the peril of Ursula's attacks. You belong to me. Eric, look out! And then there are the CGI creatures that swim alongside Ariel. Some audiences have been less than pleased with the hyper-realistic and downright eerie revamped looks of their favorite cartoon characters, especially Sebastian's realistic-looking crab and Flounder's lifelike fish makeover. Another surprise was the redesign of Scuttle, the goofy and confident seagull who fancies himself an expert on all things human. This is special. This is very, very unusual. What? What is it? It's a dingle hop. Today's scuttle has been pointedly redesigned to be a northern gannet, birds who do often incorporate bizarre objects into their nests. Gannet researchers have found things like plastic toys, false teeth, golf balls, even gold watches weaved into their nests. So that's fitting for a character who helps Ariel identify thingamabobs and who's its and what's its galore. Though it leads one to wonder, is it important to be factually accurate about bird behaviors in this particular story? Northern gannets can dive 70 feet underwater, allowing the now female character to be able to participate in scenes below the sea with Ariel. Scuttle, any idea what this is? Oh, humans use these babies to style their hair. Whereas in the original, this scene is filled with over-the-top expressions, this version is more about Aquafina's vocal delivery which feels more modern and off the cuff. Rob would often encourage me to like ad lib. You know, why don't you tell me something nice? Hey, Scuttle, I like your hair. I like the center part because the side part looks like it's receding a little bit. The popular actors of the remake bring a lot of personality to these characters in their voice performances. Yet watching a CGI bird and crab vigorously debating somehow just isn't as funny, cute, or believable as those zany original cartoons. Are you listening to me? Yes. Uh... You won't tell him. I won't tell him, and I will stay in one piece, you got it? Got it. Sorry, what'd you say again? While the animated version of this scene is filled with high physical comedy between the two characters, in the live-action scene, Sebastian can no longer be wide-eyed or slack-jawed with the limits of his realistic animation. So the physical comedy has to be present in smaller ways, like Scuttle crash-landing on Sebastian while he protests, or Sebastian pulling Scuttle's tail. There's also just not the same depth of interaction possible between the human actors and CGI animals, as actors must perform with a creature that isn't really there, compared to the original, where everyone exists in the same world. In part of your world, we see Halle Bailey's Ariel swimming, flipping, and twirling while she sings, much like in the original, where we see Ariel in her grotto lit by an opening in the rock that creates a skylight to the surface. But unlike in the animated movie, where she holds Flounder's fin, dances, and plays along with him, in the remake, her animal sidekick's range of motion is much smaller as he floats beside her. So, in many moments, The Little Mermaid has created a sense of hyper-realism that Disney remakes are often criticized for, because audiences, especially those who grew up with the cartoon, feel it dulls the magic of the original story. 
In addition to the often dark lighting, the color palette is more muted and realistic as well. Even though we're looking at similar physical locations, they appear a far visual cry from the high contrast tones, golden sand, and sparkling teal ocean depicted in the animated film. Both the darkness and the low contrast color palette have been points of contention for many audience members who express dissatisfaction with the dark, dreary, or murky trailers. Looking at the scene where Ariel rescues a drowning Prince Eric during a shipwreck, the remake creates much of the same pictures as the original, however, the remake is darker and bluer, closer to the palette of an actual ship in a storm in the middle of the night. Viewers have debated a lot whether this criticism of the low lighting is actually fair. Some scenes, like Under the Sea, are undeniably bursting with color. Do you see how good this looks? The new clips that they've been releasing, mm -mm, it's beating all those allegations. The movie looks colorful and beautiful. Still, by comparing this to the original, we can see numerous visual adjustments to incorporate the new film's real-world approach. Sebastian glides toward Ariel in a wide shot, saying, The human world is a mess. Revealing a seafloor filled with authentic but colorful plants and formations. Comparing this with the same line of the animated film, Sebastian has more close-ups, with close-ups on his exaggerated facial expressions contrasted with a darker blue version of Under the Sea. Certain familiar elements make their way into the remake, such as jewel-toned fish surrounding Ariel as Sebastian serenades her. Such wonderful things surround you. Compared with the larger yellow fish who swirl around a twirling Ariel. Such wonderful things around you. But the 2023 film isn't giving audiences imaginative and over-the-top frames like a fluke playing the saxophone or a crab doing a Charleston, but it's still giving audiences a flashy performance, with some shots even looking remarkably like the original. So there's a sense of using different means to achieve the same ends. Maybe flamingos aren't doing the shoop shoop, but Ariel's animal friends are still setting a beautiful scene for her and Prince Eric and Kiss the Girl, as fireflies dance and fish create a fountain around them. Sequels, reboots, live-action remakes, there are so many movies to watch these days. And with so many streaming services available, I have learned that I need to choose my subscriptions carefully. This video's sponsor, Rocket Money, has made that juggling act so much easier. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills, all in one place. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash the take to sign up now. Do you know how much your subscriptions are adding up to? For most people, it's actually double what they think. Rocket Money locates your subscriptions and helps you cancel the ones you don't want without the hassle. It really helped me track all of my expenses and budget better by categorizing costs. So take control of your extra spending and join the millions of Rocket Money users who are saving up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash the take. That's rocketmoney.com slash the take. Little Mermaid director Rob Marshall said the team made some changes to the original story and lyrics because the culture and sensitivities have changed over the last 34 years and it's vital that we are respectful to those changes. So for one thing, the lyrics to Kiss the Girl that some interpret as suggesting there's never a need to ask consent Not a single word, go on and kiss the girl have been changed so that there's less suggestion of Prince Eric in some way forcing himself on her. Some lyrics from Ursula's Poor Unfortunate Souls, like It's she who holds her tongue who gets a man, have also been scrapped. Meanwhile, Lin-Manuel Miranda worked with the original film's composer Alan Menken to add three new songs, and there's an extra reprise of Part of Your World. Maybe the biggest story change is Ariel's whole motivation for becoming human. Compare the lead into Under the Sea in the original, He loves me. With the lead-in from the remake. Sebastian, if you had just seen it up there, the ship rode on the wind and they filled the sky with fire. As star Halle Bailey put it, we've definitely changed that perspective of her just wanting to leave the ocean for a boy. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life and what she wants. Here, Ariel gives up her voice more broadly for the sake of her fellow sea people, who she thinks are being close-minded about humans. According to Marshall, the remake's takeaway isn't intended to be about romance as much as it is to not be afraid of the other. With a fiery mane of red hair, fair skin, and blue eyes, the original Princess Ariel is regarded as the favorite and prettiest of King Trident's daughters. Halle Bailey, who gained prominence as one half of R&B duo Chloe and Halle, made a splash in 2019 when it was announced she would take on the iconic role of Ariel in this new live-action feat. This casting held an immense significance to many, representing a milestone for Hollywood and Disney embracing diversity and inclusivity on screen. While the casting wasn't without racist backlash on the internet, ultimately it proved the importance of representation.
Nation. After the first look at the film dropped in 2022, TikTok and Instagram were filled with videos of young black girls excitedly reacting. Seeing all of the beautiful black and brown babies' reactions just makes me cry and sob because I feel for my little girl inside and um, it just makes me emotional. Jodie Benson, a Broadway actress and singer and the original voice of Ariel, created a high standard for the role. The singing voice of Ariel is integral to the character and she is repeatedly described as having the most beautiful voice. She has the most beautiful voice. She was singing. She had the most beautiful voice. So enchanting that even the sea witch Ursula desires to possess it. Therefore, the significance of Halle Bailey's casting as Ariel is further amplified by her background in R&B, a musical genre developed by black musicians. The specific vocal performance background brings a fresh perspective to the role and further highlights the beauty of black art for audiences. Halle Bailey, when she sang for us, it was so emotional. She set the bar and no one ever surpassed it. Melissa McCarthy's take on the fan favorite sea witch Ursula also appears to draw inspiration from Pat Carroll's original Ursula, who is deep voiced, conniving, sultry, and sarcastic. Not that I blame you. He is quite a catch, isn't he? <laughs> Since it's well believed by Disney and pop culture fans alike that Ursula was originally designed based on the legendary drag queen Divine, Melissa McCarthy seems to acknowledge her role's iconization and incorporates a lot of her original physical movements into her role especially in Poor Unfortunate Souls, the villain's show-stopping musical number. Overall, Melissa McCarthy's version of Ursula plays up the fabulousness of a character who's always had a passionate fan following. Many of Ursula's physicalities and much of her design feels very similar to the original, including her exaggerated arched brows, green eyeshadow, a black dress that turns into tentacles, and her red lips. But the look has some subtle differences. In the 2023 film, Ursula's lair is much darker, lit mainly by the bioluminescence of her tentacles. Holly Bailey's costume and character design clearly builds on the original, but with some noticeable updates. The character design incorporates Bailey's own locks, which she's had since she was five, weaving in auburn curls to create a more realistic version of Ariel's iconic red hair. Also differing from the animated Ariel's bright green tail and purple shell bikini top is Holly Bailey's iridescent tail made up of individual scales shimmering with green, blue, and purples, giving a lifelike version of what a mermaid could be. The costumes and locations on land through the new film take direction from the drawings in the 1989 original, but feel arguably more grounded in a historical time and place. As Ariel goes for a carriage ride with Prince Eric, she's wearing a blue and black dress with a large blue bow when she takes the reins and rides off on a path surrounded by a lush forest. This same scene in the live action remake shows Ariel in a corseted pale blue dress covered in ruffles and frills, with a wide pink headband to keep her locks out of her face. This scene also differs as the location appears to be a Caribbean location covered with palm trees and dusty dirt paths, as opposed to the animal animated version of this event, which appears to be surrounded by city walls, grapevines, and cobblestones resembling a European city. The echoes are too many to name, but here are a few. Ariel laying beside an unconscious Prince Eric in the sand feels like the same scene mirrored, though with different coloring, as well as when he looks up to see her face hazy above him. In the original Part of Your World reprise, Ariel leans against a rock while she watches Prince Eric on the shore and sings, while the sea spray splashes her as she hits her final note. This moment is accomplished in the remake, ticking a box for fans. Another quintessential Ariel scene comes when she's given legs by Ursula. Swimming upward, she breaks the surface and the audience sees a silhouette of her dramatically flipping her hair back as she comes up for air. Halle Bailey remarked that the shot took a lot of effort to perfect. I almost broke my neck. <laughs> My hair was so <laughs> Overall, some of the casting and content updates to The Little Mermaid are welcome, if not necessary, in today's age. And to be honest, many of them are fairly subtle. This is still a very faithful remake of the original romance down to countless details. But for that very reason, it faces the same hurdle as all of the Disney live action remakes. Despite all it attempts to copy, much of the color, humor, and magic is inevitably lost when broad cartoon characters get swapped for stiff, hyper-realistic CGI recreations. The life and originality of the first film is hard to muster when you're stuck making what's essentially, as insider Kirsten Akuna put it, paint by numbers. Still, the movie has its moments of creativity and is buoyed by the performances of its all-star cast. It attempts where it can to bring something new and contemporary to its mission of paying tribute to what so many have loved about The Little Mermaid for over three decades. That's the take. 
click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.